I know it is uh, hot, we're still expecting a couple people, but uh, it's very bright out here. I'll go ahead and get started. The, uh, the new law enforcement unit to address gun violence that we're talking about today is only possible because of a strong partnership with our local leaders. I want to thank uh, Mayor Williams and Chief Cummings for, for their support. I want to thank uh, County Executive Gordon uh, and Chief Setting uh, for their support as well. Also the ATF, thank you for being here. Uh, it's also because of support from the General Assembly and specifically the, the members of the Joint Finance Committee who made this a funding priority. Uh, I want to thank uh, Senator McDowell. I'm not sure if Senator McDowell is here, but I do want to thank Senator Marshall, uh, Representative Bolden, uh, Representative Potter. I believe that Senator Henry and uh, Representative Johnson are on their way as well. We are also very fortunate to have determined and talented leaders in our Department of Justice who are dedicated to a comprehensive approach required to make our community safer. I want to thank uh, State Prosecutor Kathy Jennings and her team, uh, as well as, of course, of, as, as Attorney General Biden. Uh, we're also fortunate to have strong leadership at the state level, uh, working every day to protect the public safety. Uh, they're going to be spearheading this new unit, so uh, Secretary Shalero uh, and Colonel McQueen of the Delaware State Police. Thank you, thank you both. And finally, I want to thank the Wilmington Peacekeepers and Sweep the Street uh, for representing the many community organizations that have rallied to create a grassroots anti-violence movement in our biggest city. Uh, specifically, I want to thank Brother Lamont X of the Wilmington Peacekeepers and uh, Brother Fareed. Uh, and uh, Tasha Addison is here. We were still expecting uh, Kendra Ad Anderson of Sweep the Street. Uh, also, I haven't seen him yet, but Yasser Payne of the Predictive and Analytics Reporting Project will be joining us. I'd ask you, you know, with the, the elected officials uh, always get the uh, uh, applause, but I would ask you to uh, join me in thanking the leaders of our community advocacy groups uh, for being here and for your support. Thank you. And to all the men and women of law enforcement who stand behind me, thank you all very, very much. Uh, our efforts to encourage economic development and strengthen our state's quality of life can only succeed when our streets are safe. The, w the wave of shootings we've seen in Wilmington is heartbreaking and, as Mayor Williams has said, clearly unacceptable. There's no quick fix, and it takes all of us doing our part, all levels of government, neighborhood leaders, faith communities, businesses, all of us to tackle this imposing challenge. In my office, the Department of Safety and Homeland Security, the State Police, the Department of Justice, we've all been meeting regularly with city leaders. And I really do want to thank uh, uh, Mayor Williams. We talked uh, last night. We're, we're talking on a regular basis. He came to my office recently uh, to talk about some of these issues as well as a county executive. So we've been meeting regularly with city leaders as well as with the county, uh, working to put law enforcement and other resources to the best possible use to support each other. Uh, Mayor, we continue to be committed to partnering with you, as we are with leaders of all of our cities and towns, to fight gun crime. And we've made progress toward making our community safer by working to steer our most at-risk citizens away from criminal activity, but we clearly have, to have a long way to go. We're not here to celebrate those efforts. We have so much more to do, and the new effort that we highlight here is one part of that path forward. So I mentioned in my State of the State Address, State of the State Address this year that far too often gun violence is committed by shooters prohibited from owning guns. It's critical that we more effectively trace the source of these weapons and punish those involved in illegal gun sales. And to better support our law enforcement officers in this work, we've partnered with Wilmington and Newcastle County to establish a new State Police Guns Investigation Unit funded with $265,000 in the budget that went into effect on July 1. The unit is a team of full, five full-time staff, including a state trooper, an intelligence analyst, an agent from the Division of Alcohol and Tobacco Enforcement, and one representative from each of the county and the city forces. They're going to focus on in-depth reviews of firearms transactions, as well as developing a statewide strategy to better enforce our gun purchasing laws. That includes working to prevent and uncover straw, purchase, straw purchases, web, weapons trafficking, and all illegal sales. This group will operate statewide in cooperation not only with Wilmington and Newcastle County, but also with ATF, with Dover, and other municipal police departments. As we mark the formation of the unit, we're also mindful that better firearms investigations are only one part of what it takes to make our neighborhood safer. We can't meaningfully address violence in our communities if we don't pay attention to the poverty and lack of quality job and education opportunities that make people more likely to get involved with violence in the first place. 
That's why we're reforming our criminal justice system to reduce re recidivism by giving ex-offenders a better chance to productively contribute to their communities after they've served their time. And many of the reforms that were, I signed into law this year are geared toward giving them a fair opportunity to get find a job. We've also committed to after school and summer programs that provide a safe haven for youth while offering recreational opportunities as well as anti-bullying, anti-violence, and educational activities. Thousands of young Delawareans have participated over the past few years with the help of millions of dollars in state funding. Just last week, I had the opportunity to visit uh, with Pastor Livingston in the program, what they call the Freedom uh, School over at uh, Mother Church, uh, which has had a summer program for a, for a lot of kids. Senator Marshall was there that day uh, as well. If people don't feel safe in their communities, little else matters. And when combined with efforts to provide opportunities to to these youth, tax offenders, and other at-risk Delawareans. Today's announcement marks an important step, a step towards stopping the shootings that have caused so much pain, so many tragedies, and that have impeded progress in Wilmington and throughout our state. So I am very grateful to all who have come together uh, today in support of this. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Mayor Williams, then to County Executive Gordon, uh, then to Secretary Shalero, Colonel McQueen, uh, and to uh, Kathy Jennings on behalf of the Department of Justice. Uh, with that, I'd ask you to join me in uh, thanking, uh, uh, to thanking Mayor Williams uh, for his leadership and inviting him to come to the podium. Good morning, everyone. I appreciate everyone being here this morning, especially our law enforcement personnel. A uh, united front fighting crime is the way to go. Wilmington too long has been carrying the load by itself. I appreciate you, Governor, the legislature, members of the legislature, uh, Representative Potter, Bolden, Senator Marshall and state folks and Kathy Jennings from the Attorney General's office, I, I truly appreciate you because together we can lick this thing. But fighting each other and saying Wilmington's a bad city and not standing up for our city and talking about the great things this city has to offer and do is a bad thing. And sometimes when the camera's put in front of people, they talk about how bad Wilmington is. Wilmington is not a bad city. Wilmington's a great city. I just left a uh, conference in New York City. You want to you hear about some bad cities? I, I thought I was in uh, dreamland compared to some of the cities and mayors I've talked to. But believe me, together, united front, sticking together, working together, coming up with solutions, that's the way we're going to save our city and turn our city around. We can fight each other all the time once we save the city. There's a, I got plenty of space in that building if anybody wants to box. But after that's all over with, we want to make sure our city moves in a positive direction by being on a united front and stop jumping up and down saying Wilmington is bad. Wilmington is not bad. We have arts in the park, our pools opened early, our recreational centers are open, college, uh, scholarships. We've done so much for our youth. We go into communities and talk to our people. We have a great city, ladies and gentlemen. We have our arts. Most of the cities our size, they're losing their arts programs. We are not. We are thriving. We are moving forward. If you don't believe me, come down to the riverfront on a Saturday night. Walk down Market Street on a Friday evening, and you'll see how many people are in our city. We have a great city, and I stand firm to say that our city is great. One of the best cities on the East Coast. Thank you. Mark, get out of my seat. <laughs> we were just joined by Representative J.J. J. Johnson and Senator Mark Rose Henry. And, and let me say, since taking office, uh, this, this governor has shown leadership involving himself in all aspects, and particularly the city of Wilmington. And let me also remind everybody that it took eight to ten years to get in the shape it's in today. And uh, it's going to take a while, and the mayor is trying every day to turn it around. And uh, I can't say enough about, you know, the partnership that the, uh, the state has, has taken the lead with the county and the city. And I know only good things can come from this. I have with me today my distinguished county attorney, Bernard Pepikai, who will also be involved in what's going to be going on. So any initiative like this, I think only helps in the arsenal that we all need to keep turning the trend of what has been occurring over a century. So thank you very much. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we talk a great deal about the issue of violence in our, in our state. And the problem of gun violence obviously continues to plague our state and cities. And as we have struggled to deal with violent crime over the years, uh, the one thing that has become clear is there is no one magic answer that will somehow allow us to wave a wand and have it disappear. 
What is clear is that the problem requires a host of people and groups to come together, as you see here today, that represent community-based, federal, state, and local government organizations, educational, social, and religious institutions, that working together will be the only way to reduce the incidence of violence and provide hope for the communities that we all serve. Law enforcement is obviously a critical component of this team, and here, we are here today to add an important tool to their toolbox. The use of a firearm in the commission of a crime changes lives in ways that we cannot even begin to measure. It ends the future of too many of our young people well before they've had a chance to take advantage of the many opportunities that this state has to offer. They cause untold horror and lifelong mourning for the families of those lost in these senseless acts. It has created communities paralyzed by fear and a culture within some of our youth that we simply can no longer tolerate. The issue of gun violence has put enormous strain on our police, on our prosecutors, the judicial and the correctional resources to the point that it is becoming extremely difficult to sustain. The one thing we do know is that these guns are not manufactured in the state of Delaware. And today we are adding a resource that will begin to answer the question as to how a 15-year-old ends up with a firearm to commit a felony. And when an innocent woman is leaving a grocery store, the gun that is used to end her life, the simple question remains, where did it come from? On average, gun violence claims 30,000 lives annually in the United States. Every year, approximately 100,000 Americans are victims of gun violence. And tragically, eight children and teens under the age of 20 are killed by guns every day. This is not a problem that is unique to Delaware. Quite simply, the mission of this unit is to find out how these guns are ending up in the hands of people who use them to cause such devastation and to prosecute those responsible for providing illegal firearms through whatever their method may be. It is my firm belief that having a statewide unit dedicated to truly understanding the illegal trafficking of firearms used in the commission of crime will go a long way in cutting it off. We are here today united in this effort to those that are engaged in profiting and profiting from the illicit sale and distribution of guns, the message is that the time has come. Thank you. I just want to thank the governor, the mayor, and other officials here at the county executive, all law enforcement, our deputies who are over to the right, who work every day to uh, prosecute the crime that is committed in Delaware and in our city. There were five shootings last night, four in the city, one in the county. That is unacceptable. Everyone is working incredibly hard to get at the people who are doing the shooting, to prosecute the people who are doing the shooting. This next measure, this next step, to get at where are these guns coming from? How does a 14-year-old boy get a gun? How does an eight-year-old child get a gun? This is aimed, this effort is aimed at getting at the source of gun trafficking. It is alive and well in this state, and I applaud the efforts of the governor and others to create a task force to get at this very issue. We will devote our resources. The attorney general has made this a top priority in his office and we will prosecute the cases that come to us. We will provide legal advice to law enforcement along the way, and we will continue to make it a top priority. Getting at where the guns are coming from is vital in the effort to fight crime. Thank you. Good morning. I just start to thank, start by thanking our law enforcement, law enforcement partners. Uh, the state, we've worked well together on crime uh, as it affects the state, and we've shared information more now than we ever have before. Uh, we haven't shared that information as much uh, when it comes to how guns get into the state of Delaware, and that's the focus of this unit, is to focus on how violent crime guns are used in this state. Uh, again, it comes down to intelligence sharing, uh, partnerships, and collaboration with all of our partners. Uh, we're determined to do that. Uh, this unit, again, will focus primarily on violent crime guns. Uh, how do violent crime guns end up in the city and how do they end up throughout the state? Or we have a gun in one case used in the city and one minute used down in Georgetown or in, in uh, Seaford. So this unit is to focus on, that, on those crimes, 
bring our partners together, work with our local uh, law enforcement agencies, determine how to best prosecute those cases, and work with our federal partners uh, in the ATF. This, only, this unit can only succeed if we work with our federal partners as well. Uh, right now we have an ATF task force within this state that works collaboratively to, to prosecute cases federally, but we want to prosecute those cases also at the state level and make this unit more effective and make gun trafficking in the state unacceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Chief Cummings to come up and, and, and say a word. And I just I want to make uh, two points before he does. One, I also want to thank the members of our congressional delegation, Senator Carper, Senator Coons, Congressman Carney. We meet on a quarterly basis uh, with the mayor, uh, and they've been very engaged, so I'm uh, grateful to them. And then I also want to make uh, clear that the this is although this is called a task force, this is not like a typical like government task force. This is actually a group of uh, people, in this case, a state trooper, uh, somebody from the Division of Alcohol and Tobacco Enforcement, uh, an analyst, as well as somebody from the uh, county police and the, the city police who were really focused in, uh, in a very tangible way, on specific guns, where they're coming from, uh, going after uh, straw purchases and the like. So that's really what, that's really what this is about. Uh, with that, I'd like to ask Chief Cummings to have a few words. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'll be brief. I'd just like to say that bringing this task force together for the city of Wilmington and also throughout the state and the partnership that we have working is only going to help us pull those weapons off the street, identify where they're coming from, to help our citizens when we're at a point of violence in the city that is unspeakable. For every weapon that we take off the street, there seems to be two or three that replace it immediately. So this group coming together throughout the state, all the different agencies that are out here, the politicians, again, we applaud your efforts because this is something that is needed desperately for our city. So again, we thank you for bringing this together. Okay, all right, uh, thank you very much. I'm sure people will be around for one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews if, if you like, so thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.